Farming is a family affair for Keith and Viv Richards. They took over the farm from Viv's parents 26 years ago. Now in their 60s, Keith and Viv are looking to their future. Keith is still passionate about developing the 9,000 stock unit breeding and finishing property and struggles to make time away for more than a night or two. He admits to losing energy by the end of the week and recently had a close call with the tractor. Viv is keen to spend more time at their beach house and would like to revamp it for the extended family. Their eldest daughter, Christine, is settled in the USA, married with two children and has a successful career as a lawyer. Their son James got an ag degree, then spent a couple of years sharing. He came home eight years ago when his parents purchased 314 hectares from the neighbours. Happily married to Jess, a dental therapist, they have two preschool children. The youngest daughter, Sam, is a diesel mechanic. She enjoys bringing her family back home to the farm when they can. Keith and Viv are conscious that James enabled them to purchase the new block, and his energy and knowledge is taking the business to a new level. Keith feels compromised between still wanting to contribute physically, but is conscious of robbing the next generation of their opportunity. He thinks it is now Viv's turn as she was recently appointed to the National Council for Rural Women. Living nearer the airport would make travelling easier for her. As parents and business owners, they want to secure their own future, reward James for his past and future endeavours, and pass on a legacy to all three children. This is the story of one family's path of succession planning and how they navigated the many minefields that could tear a family and the farm business apart. Through their bank manager, the Richards were introduced to a succession planning facilitator. They arranged their first family meeting to coincide with Christine's visit back to New Zealand. Using an independent venue away from the farm and an experienced facilitator took a lot of pressure off both Keith and I. We had an agenda to follow and were free to actively listen to the expectations of all our children. We were able to work through everyone's aspirations and concerns without worrying where the conversation was heading. The first meeting was about having an open conversation rather than setting firm plans. Keith felt unsure about sharing all the financial details with the kids, but in the context of the day, it seemed natural and built trust across the family. Fresh ideas flowed in the family discussion, with everyone contributing to looking at opportunities within the business and externally. It was a fantastic day. I was worried that the girls would think I was getting more than my share, but once we agreed we wanted to work on creating new opportunities for us as a family, it began an exciting process rather than a defensive one for Jess and I. Keith and Viv discussed with some of their farming friends and rural professionals how they could adequately recognise the business growth as a result of James and Jess's work on the farm over the last eight years and going forward. Previous conversations at home with James and Jess about the goals for them and their own children had not progressed into anything tangible. Now, Keith and Viv felt ready to include James and Jess in ownership of the stock and plant. This would create a stepping stone into farm business ownership for James and Jess. Over time, they could increase their shareholding. Keith and Viv knew they needed to set favourable stock values and low interest rates to make this a viable option for both parties. Jess agreed to take a shared role in managing the farm finances with Viv, including upgrading the accounting software package for the business to integrate with their accounting firm. Both off-farm children could see opportunities to use the farm title as security for a business outside of the family farm. They also understood the need to put some firewalls and process around this to protect the family capital. Eight months later, the Richards family met again. Keith and Viv proposed to the family that the stock and plant would be sold to a new family company over the next two years. 
They would own half of the shares, James and Jess the other half. In 10 years' time, they could lend James and Jess the money to purchase the remaining shares and deal with the loans under their wills. The upgraded accounting package would allow the family to have more transparency and control of the farm finances. For Sam, the first family meeting had been a catalyst for an open discussion about future partnership roles in the rural garage where she worked. Having her say via Skype from Minnesota, Christine said she would remain overseas for now. However, she was keen to buy property in New Zealand as a base for their children to study or work. They appreciated the opportunity to use the farm assets as collateral. She had previously wondered if by being in the USA she was going to miss out. As a family, they agreed that priority was given to their parents who had invested their lifetime's work in the farm and the business needed to deliver on that. Jess summed it up for the family. It's important to acknowledge the history here, but moving forward it's so powerful to be honest with all family members about the realities and priorities. The conversations aren't always easy, but they are essential. The Richards now look forward to their family AGM, where they are excited to watch Keith and Viv start to broaden their life after full-time farming. James and Jess presented an updated five-year business plan. It focused on paying out capital to upgrade the beach house. Capital will be paid to Christine and Sam, on dates agreed to, in lieu of a lesser share in the trust's assets in the future. New opportunities are being discussed for each of the children. They are happy to have an understanding of the business and know that as a family, they now have the ability to accommodate the challenges and pursue the new opportunities that will inevitably arise in the future.